This is a follow-up to my first video about the game of NIM. I want to talk about the master strategy for NIM here. It's a bit more advanced than the easy symmetrical strategy I talked about in the first video, but it has a lot in common with that. And uh, brings up some really cool issues. This kind of goes beyond, I think, um, connect goes beyond connections with basic mid school or high school ideas to to more towards enrichment. But uh, it's still really cool stuff to share with people. I analyzed game B before in terms of using the symmetrical strategy, and so let's go ahead and delete that. Um, talk about a couple of different games, uh, A and C, and. Let me just uh, talk about what we need in the strategy. In the symmetrical strategy, it was pretty good that there were good and bad positions. Bad was symmetrical. That's what you want to leave your opponent with, because you want them to be in a bad position. Good, maybe everything else was a little unclear. The empty position is bad. That definitely should be true about any kind of grouping into good and bad positions. It was true that if you're in a bad position, you must play in a way that improves it, which is bad because you're you're giving that better position to somebody else. So that's why it's a bad position. And that's in this case with the symmetrical strategy is because if you have a symmetrical board and then just take taking uh, some sticks away from one of the piles is going to make it asymmetrical. And here's the, the crux of why what we need to do uh, better. It's true that if you leave somebody a symmetrical, stra symmetrical position, and they play, and then you play, you can always mirror their move and put it back into the bad kind of position, a symmetrical position. But, for example, with game A up here, there's no way you could play and on the very first move make that into a completely symmetrical board. And so we can't always go from a non-symmetrical position and make it into symmetrical. So what we want is a different way of dividing into good and bad positions. And there's going to be more bad positions now. Symmetrical positions will definitely still be bad because we know how we know that that's a bad position to be in if you're playing against a good player or it's a good position to leave your opponent in if you're a good player. But we're going to create more bad positions. So, here's the features we still want to want to keep and improve on. Features of the best strategy. There's good and bad positions. The bad, let's put a question mark for a minute. And I'll talk about what the bad positions are. Good will be everything else. The empty position still should be considered bad because it's an automatic loser. You're done. The game's over. You've you've lost if you if you have the empty board. Or in other words, the the other player has just taken the last pit, the last stick. So it's not going to just be symmetrical ones. Um, and well, they include also any symmetrical position is bad, but there will be more. And so that'll give us, as a good player, more ways to put somebody else in a bind. So we also we definitely want to have a situation where if you leave somebody in a bind and they cre they're in a bad position, they have to play in such a way as they give give you a good position. And we want this to be true with no question marks. Playing from a good position can always create a bad position. Okay, so I'll give you the I'll give you the the key to how to do this. What we're gonna do is we're going to take a game board, like game A here, and I'm going to show you a tableau here. Here, um, I'm taking that game board, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to think of each pile, even though this is really one pile, it's a three pile, I'm going to think of it as a two and a one next to each other. And I'm going to think of this five pile as a four and a one next to each other, and I'm going to just think of this four pile as just a four pile. What I'm doing is I'm separating it out and I'm basically figuring out how to group them into powers of two, or equivalently, how to write them in binary notation. So three, for example, is zero one one in binary. That's what the sub the subscript two indicates. That means it's if you're reading from right to left, this is the two to the zeroth place, the two to the ones place, and the two to the twoth place. In other words, how many zero, how many ones, how many twos, how many fours, and just like in power in base ten, you can count anything in base 2, and there's a unique way to write any integer in base 2, and the way you th write 3 is it groups into 2 and then a 1 left over. No groups of 4, one group of one of 2, and one group of, of 1. 5 groups into the 4 and the 1, that's a 4 group, no 2 groups, and 1, 1 group. And then 4 is a power of 2, so it's like 100 in base 10. It's, it's exactly the analog of that, it's just 2 to the 2, so it's one group of 2 to the 2 and nothing else. And 
so here's the rule. It's a, it's a very simple rule. If you can sort of easily visualize this, the rule for what the bad positions are is very simple, and it's very much analogous to the symmetry thing. It's um, one of the things about symmetry is that if I have a symmetrical position and I say, oh, how many groups of, th how many three groups are there? There will be an even number of three groups. Or how many 12 groups are there? There will be an even number of 12 groups. Well, what we do here is we kind of pretend that these powers of two act independently. And we'll see why we can do that in a minute. And we just ask that there be an even number of four groups, sort of fictional virtual four groups. And an even number of two and an even number of one, of one groups. And similarly, if we had 8 groups or 16 groups or 32 groups. And so let me write it down. Here's the rule. Bad means that there are an even number of 1s, 2s, 4s, 8s, 16s, etc. Okay, and these are the virtual groups. I don't mean that you actually count how many one groups, two groups, four groups are visible. You actually do this thing in your head. You put on what I'd say like binary glasses and you write everything in binary numbers. If you have the luxury of actually taking out pen pencil and paper and writing this down secretly while your opponent's wondering what you're doing, which they probably won't give you the luxury of, then you just write them down in columns, write every, all the actual numbers of the groups in, 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 uh, in binary, write those down carefully, uh, adjusted with the columns lined up, and then you just say, okay, is this even? Yes, that's good. There's an even number, there's a 4 and a 4. Those kind of match symmetrically, basically. There's an even number of 4 groups. Oh, and there's an even number of 1 groups, but oh my gosh, there's not an even number of 2 groups. That's a good thing if you're the first player, because you don't want a bad position. You don't want this even number of uh, binary groups. So you just need to play so that you create that. Now that's a little tricky, but in this case it's not hard. You just eliminate that two group. Oh, okay. I'm just going to visualize this three as a two and a one, and I'm just going to take the two group away. Now one five four. If somebody w isn't wearing their binary number glasses, that doesn't look like a symmetrical position. But wearing the binary glasses, it does look a lot more symmetrical. It looks like the one and the one match and the four and the four match. And that's how I usually think of this. I don't usually try to like write things in binary numbers in my head. I just try to visualize these little artificial divisions within the five group and visualize them in groups of one, two, four, eight, etc. And then try to see, can I create what looks to me like a symmetrical position? So the claim is that this is doom for, for, for player two. Well, let's see how it works. Player two might move, for example, oops, to go to this one, okay, to go to this position. And it, just by taking one out of the four group. So let's see what's happened. Now it's still 0, 0, 001, 1, 0, 001, now 0, 011, 1, 1, and this is player 1 to move. Well, now there's an odd number of 4 groups because that 4 group has been destroyed by player 2's move. And there's back to being an odd number of 2 groups and an odd number of 1 groups. It's all odd. How can we fix that? Player 1 needs to, certainly needs to destroy a 4 group because. Um, you can't add a four group in. It's the high, that's the highest thing appearing in all of these numbers. There's no way you could add a four group in. And so you're going to have to destroy that four group. But the great thing about that is, in destroying that four group, you don't have to take all four of them away. You can take four, you can sort of visualize it as take all four of them away and then put a few back strategically in here to make all the other numbers work out. So we take out that four group, but we put back in a two group. Okay, and, oh wait, but we also have an odd number of one groups. Oh, well, we can take that one out too. So we're going to take basically all of these guys away. We don't want the four group there because that was odd. We don't want the one group there because it's extra, but that gives us five sticks to play with, and that's plenty to fix the fact that there was an extra two group, and we put the two group back in. Now, our opponent doesn't see any of that reasoning. They just see us take three sticks away. But one way to think about it is we're taking away these ones which we don't want, and we're putting back one, one back in so that there will be an even number of one groups and an even number of two groups. Now, one, two, three, that's not too hard to analyze so, sort of on your own, uh, how, why that's a bad position for number two. But what, regardless of what player two does, they're, they're really, really hosed now. So suppose uh, player two just takes one away from the three group. 
again, player one can move in exactly the same way to create the bad position. Now, it's really easy because they can actually create a symmetrical position. And if you're actually doing this practically, if you can create an honest to god, obviously symmetrical position without the binary glasses, then do it and you're done. Then you use the mirroring strategy and it's much simpler. And so player one moves to this position, player two has to play off a symmetrical position and they're hosed. Okay. So let's see, let's go back up to the principles before I uh, show you another game. Um, the empty position is bad. Absolutely. The empty position definitely has an even number of 1s, 2s, 4s, 8s, 16s. If you write everything in binary and it's all zeros, you're going to have zero, and that's an even number of, of all kinds of groups. Um, playing from a bad position must leave the bad set of positions. So let's see. If you start out like player 2 right near the start of game A, if you start out in this position, 1, 5, 4, why did player 2 move? have to move in such a way why couldn't they have left player one a bad position and then been had the advantage? Well, you've got, let's just look at the binary numbers here. Player two has got to take exactly one of these numbers and decrease it. And this sum here was an even number. This sum was an even number. This sum was an even number. If you take a binary number and you change that binary number, you're going to have to change at least one of the digits. Otherwise, you haven't changed the number. And if you change one of even one of these digits, then the the sum of the columns is going to be changed from even to odd. There's no way of around that. Maybe you're going to change more than one digit. And in fact, the way player two actually did play, they played all they changed all three of the digits. But it doesn't really matter. Whatever player two does has to change one of these binary digits. And so the perfect wonderfulness of the the sums being even is destroyed. And of course, that's not really wonderful for for player two to to have that position to play in. But it's play it's great for player one to see that player two has to destroy that sort of symmetry, the evenness of the column sums of these binary numbers. So that's part of why this strategy works. That if you are in a position with this kind of aesthetically nice situation that there's an even number of ones, twos, fours, etc., then you're going to have to screw that up when you when you play. And then the more subtle thing is this one. Can, playing from good can always create bad. Okay, so let's do one more example before we discuss that a little bit more. Um, and in fact, let me go ahead and do that in another video because I'm re reaching my 15-minute limit for the screencast.